أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان We thank Allah, our Creator, for all the blessings that He has given to us. And we pray to Allah and beseech Him to continue to bless us on the face of the earth. Indeed, Allah has given us a very great favor to be alive after having given us uh, so many, or along with giving us so many of His other blessings and favors. Iman Allah has given to us, the life that we have Allah has given to us. The aman and afiyat, the protection, safety that we have, all these things come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah, who is the creator of every single thing, and who is the creator of every single situation and who is the creator of every single state and condition he has conditioned his blessings with certain things and when those things are put into place then the conditions the results that are connected to these things will certainly follow and Allah has done that in many, many, many different things. And when those things that are connected to bring about the blessings of Allah, they are not there, then the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, then those do not come about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you do good, then he will give you good. So good will always come when the individual does good. But when the individual stops the doing of good, then the good will not come because the good from Allah is conditioned upon the goodness done by the individual. Allah says in the Quran, In tansur Allah yansurukum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum if you help Allah's religion, Allah is saying to us, if you help Allah's religion, then Allah will certainly help you. There is no doubt about that. You don't even have to question if Allah will help you or not once you do this. Allah does not break His promise. And if Allah has said, and He has certainly stated in the Holy Quran, a book which no change can come to. If you help Allah's religion, then Allah will certainly help you. But if you do not do that, and Allah decides to punish you, فَمَنْ يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ Who can help you besides Allah? Who? So if Allah stops helping the individual, and in his life, all sorts of things begin to happen. And he goes through different times of difficulties. And he sees with his clear eyes that he is not being helped by Allah. Then he must look back to see whether he is fulfilling that condition that is there to bring this about or not. That's the first thing. Why do you think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Aisha, his own beloved wife? He said, Oh Aisha, every time a difficulty and every time a calamity befalls you, immediately look back to your actions because these calamities come on account of your own actions. Allah Himself says in the Quran, mischief wickedness and wrongdoings have actually spread in the earth on the land and at sea the world is engulfed with wickedness and evils today subhanallah at different levels 
You look at the international level, the oppression, the cruelty, the killing of innocent people. All these things are taking place and those of you who are following up the news, this is not hidden from you. Bloodshed, cruelty, oppression, stealing the property, even stealing the lands belonging to other people, this has become a norm at the international level. There is no doubt about this. At the national level, Allahu Akbar, we can gauge the condition of our own state by simply looking at the news recently as to what is happening at the public schools. The crisis at schools, the crisis among the youths, the violence, subhanallah, that is taking place. Actually a state that nearly in every one of these public schools, such heinous crimes are being committed even to young innocent children of seven and eight years of age who are being sexually assaulted. Na'udhu billah, may Allah protect our children and progeny. What has become to human beings? What has become of human beings? Allahu Akbar. To stoop to such crimes that even does not exist among the animals. Allahu Akbar. Not even among the animals you will find such evils. The stabbing and the kicking and the killing. And the worst about this is that when it is done, people brag about it. Those who are involved in it, they brag about it. They boast about it. It is put on the internet for thousands and thousands to see so that people will feel that they are heroes now. This is the state that is happening. And so many different conditions are taking place. In our homes, within the family circle, in the community, at society at large. These are the things that are taking place. This is what is present there in our country, in our city, in our state, in our village, in our own schools. This is what is happening. Nearly all of us here, we have children who are attending schools and institutes at different levels. Many, many parents, they will tell you, they come to us for admission and they are saying my children they are scared to go to school they are saying mommy I do not want to go back send me anywhere else on the face of the earth but not that school I do not want to go I am scared I'm scared for my life how many of these kids carry their lunch to school and they never get they never get the chance to eat it because it is stolen they are beaten for it. Na'uzu billah. And we can go on and on, but that's not the maqsad and the purpose. The purpose is to show the widespread wrongdoings and the evils that have started to emerge on the face of the earth, even within our own community. And what is happening now, as the days go by and the years go by, and we come closer and closer to the last days and the hour of judgment, things will never become better. They wouldn't get better. They will become worse. As Anas radiallahu ta'ala an narrates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No time comes upon man except that that which is yet to come is worse than the one before. What is yet to come is worse than before. The days have gone by. Those from amongst you who are a little elder than others. When you or you have heard your parents. When a woman walks on the road with even the skirt up to the knees. They used to abhor that. They used to detest that. They used to say what happened to this woman? She doesn't have any shame. That's the way she's going to dress. That time has passed, now they are dressing worse than that. And that has become widely accepted as the norms. And while women are dressing in such a vulgar manner, and revealing 
95 and 99 percent of their own bodies and this seems to be not a problem and acceptable by the authorities wherever you go when a woman wants to dress decent allahu akbar and protect her chastity and her modesty and protect and conceal her body by wearing a gong and wearing a hijab and wearing an iqab. Now this is something that is reprehensible in the eyes. This country has banned niqab. That country has banned niqab. And it is going on. The fight really is against religion on the face of the earth. Why? Because of the fact that Satan is fighting to control. And the only power to defend the truth is the power of religion. Don't we see that everything, even if we were not even to speak about the Islamic teachings, you speak and you understand from the scriptures of the prophets in the past, nearly every one of these things that have been prohibited, for which punishments came from Allah, they are legalized openly today. And that doesn't seem to be a problem. That is no problem. It's acceptable. Because shaitan, he is going to become the ruler. And he will send his agent in human form who will be the Dajjal and the Antichrist. Who will be the ruler. And he will be the king of the unbelievers. And he will be the king of the wicked and sinful people. And since he will come in a human form, Allah will not send an angel to destroy him. Allah will send another human being, the one who is known as Isa salam, to destroy him and put an end not only to his life, but to the wickedness that he will bring with him. But that wickedness will not come when he shows up. It will come far before he will have agents carrying out his duty. As Allah says in Surah Nas, about those people who put evil whispers in the hearts of people. Min al wa nas. These evil whisperers will be from men and from jinnats and the shayateen. So Satan wants to rule. How does he infiltrate into the system? He fights religion. He fights religious beliefs. Everything that is deemed to be morally acceptable by religious peoples, they are termed outdated. They are disturbing the peace. They are disturbing the peace. Subhanallah. So if there is a crowd of people in a certain place and a woman is walking down with a niqab, everybody will look back and say, oh, what, who is that? So that is disturbing the peace for them. You see, human mind is so strange that anything you want to do right or wrong, you could always find a justifiable reason for that. This is why you will find criminals on the streets. Although they were arrested, they are on the streets. There will always be loophole in the law because law, law and the law of a country, it is... A, the result of the thinking of the human mind. A religion is not based on human mind. A religion is based on divine laws coming from the creator of the human mind. The human mind can only understand a certain limit. The human mind can only see what might be good for now. What might be good for the morrow, he doesn't know about that. But the creator of the human beings and the human mind, who is Allah, he knows what will happen not only tomorrow, thousands and thousands of years ahead. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every single thing as I started in the beginning. There are Causes for certain things. And when certain things come about, the consequences shall follow and there is no doubt about it. And with all these things that are happening, we have to ask ourselves as Muslims, our religion, complete and perfect. And there is no need for any new teaching. And there is no need for any Anybody to come about and burst his head day and night to figure out a way, a way out. 
a way to resolve this problem because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the world, he has created, created Satan, he knows the capabilities of this one that is called Satan and Shaitan. He knows what he can do, he knows what he will bring about and he knows the type of followers that he will have. Allah has thus given us in the Quran teachings to combat that. And such combat will take place that we will always be the winners. Allahu Akbar. That we shall never be the losers. This is why Allah says, the mu'minun humul muflihun, they will always be the winners. If you lose in the sight of man, you are a winner in the sight of Allah. You are a winner. A believer is always a winner. A believer is never a loser. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain teachings in the Holy Quran that if we follow these teachings then to the extent of our ability and to the best of our ability if we follow these teachings then inshallah good will prevail and good will come about. Probably we are not and we will not be able to change the wider community and change the world at large and remove the oppression and remove the cruelty and remove all those evils and ills of the society. But if we start somewhere, we are going to reach somewhere. But if we start nowhere, we ain't going to reach anywhere. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ said, Charity begins at home. That's where we have to start from in everything. In ourselves, in our family members, in our children, in the next door neighbor, in the close-knitted family members, in the extended family. This is the way we go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to the whole mankind. The whole mankind. To the black, to the white, to the Arab, to the non-Arabs. To those who lived in palaces and balconies and those who lived in small huts. Those who lived in the caves and those who lived in the mountains and in the desert. To every single person. But you know what was the first thing and the first order that came to the Prophet wasallam? It is that eye of the Holy Quran. In which after being commissioned to be a universal prophet. A prophet for the whole world. For the whole mankind and whose prophethood will go until the day of judgment. Allah told him, وَأَنذِرَ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ O Muhammad, your first duty is to warn your family members. That's the first duty. Not outsiders. Not outsiders. Not your neighbor. Not your friends. Not those in the community. That's your first duty. Remind your close family members. Work on your close family members. Give them the da'wah. Give them the message. Teach them about Allah. Teach them about uh, the hereafter. Teach them about true beliefs. Start there. When the Prophet wasallam started there, and after some time had passed, Allah revealed in the other eye of the Quran, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, kum fa'anthir, O oh, the one clothed in the blanket, now arise and one mankind. Now is the universal message. The message before was small. Now is the universal message. Come, stand up, arise. And warn the whole mankind. Subhanallah. So there is always a point where we start from. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a beautiful teaching. Allah has placed a task upon us. That if you and I, subhanallah, we begin to perform this task, then inshallah, goodness will always prevail. And wrongdoings will stop. And if we do not perform this task, then wrongdoings will prevail and goodness will stop. The opposite will happen. And that task which Allah has placed on our shoulders, each and every one of us here, is where he says in the Holy Quran, 
that it is a job upon our shoulders to invite and teach people that which is good and stop them from wrongdoings. That is a job and a task that Allah has placed on our shoulders. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, You Muslims, kuntum khayra ummati. You are the best of all people. Hundreds of nations have passed before you. Adam alayhi salam came, he had a nation. Noah alayhi salam came, he had a nation. Subhanallah, and it came down to Ad and Thamud and Hud alayhi salam and Saleh alayhi salam and every single prophet from the 124,000 or so prophets that came, each one of them had a nation. Many were the nations that were sent before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If a prophet had two followers, that was his nation. The people he came to, that was his nation. The people who drove him out, that was the nation. The people who killed him, that was his nation also. That was the people he was sent to. And of all the nations that came in the past, Allah is making an, annou an announcement. And he's saying to us, the Muslims, through the tongue of of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lidnas. You are the best of all the nations taken out for the benefit of mankind. You, O oh Muslims, you will benefit mankind. You, subhanallah. You will benefit them. You will bring good to them. You will elevate them. You will give them good ranks. You will teach them morality. You will teach them what is goodness. You will teach them what is wrong, what are wrongs. That's your job. This is why Allah says, Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi. Your job is to order people to do good. Tell people to do good. Tell them the good things they have to do. Watanhauna anil munkar. And you must stop them from doing wrong things. That's your job. You have to do that. And when we look at it, my dear respected and beloved brothers and sisters, when we look at it in our lives, if we fail to do that, then the wrongs that we are failing to stop will hit us back. It will hit us back. If there is a criminal in our community and our neighborhood, and we don't talk against him, and we don't try to stop him, one day we will be victims of his crime. One day he will burst open our doors. One day he may come to shoot you or your wife or your family members. If you have a child in your home that is stealing and you don't stop your child from stealing, one day he will steal from you, his own parents. One day he will steal bigger sums of money. Every big crime starts from a small crime. Big crimes don't start big. Before a man could have that audacity and boldness to murder another one, it had to start somewhere probably getting into small squabbles and fights at school. Probably ill-treating animal, taking a stone and pelting a cat or a kitten and watching it die in front of you without any, having any mercy and compassion in the heart. That leads, that leads to the hardness of the heart. So if you see a human being dying, it doesn't matter to you. You can see the blood of another one flowing. It doesn't matter to you because compassion and mercy has been seized from the heart. Every big crime starts from a small one. And if we can't tell people to do the good and stop them from bad, then one day may Allah forbid it may affect us. The crimes affect us. Why do you think we are affected in so many ways? If there is oppression in a state, we are being oppressed. If cruelty is meted out to the members of a community, we will be victims of that cruelty. Why do you think people take to the streets? Why do you think people placard? Why do you think people protest? People go on a hunger strike. People invite the media to capture them so it will be shown on the air, on television, on the media. They want their voices to be heard. They want to speak something good. They want to stop something wrong. That's what they want to do. They want to tell the whole community that wrongdoings are being done to us. We are being oppressed. Somebody help us. These people are cruel to us. We want some help. They want to tell the people the good that they must do, which they have forgotten. 
Islam, the religion of beauty, the religion of success, the religion of perfection, the religion which gives us every type of goodness has taught us from the very, very beginning that we can do certain things. If put into practice, it will not even reach to this level, subhanallah. It will not even reach to this level. And this is why from the beauty of the teachings of Islam is that it cuts every single thing from the root. It does not allow any single thing to reach a state where it becomes uncontrollable. Wine, khamar, intoxicants, rum, alcoholic beverages, they are haram. But uh, are they only haram when an individual will drink so much that he becomes drunk? No. But that is when it befogs the mind, isn't that so? When you look at it, when the mind becomes beclouded, when the akal and intelligence starts to be lost, when you drink a little bit, a good amount, and it starts to befog you. But the Sharia of Islam didn't say no. At that time, only at that time, it is, uh, it is wrong. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا أَسْكَرَهُ كَثِيرُكُ فَقَلِيلُهُ حَرَامُ Whatever intoxicates in a large amount, even a small amount of it is totally haram. So if one bottle is haram, one tiny drip, 0.5% is also haram. That is also haram. The one who makes it is sinful. The one who transports it is sinful. The one who sells it is sinful. The one who advertises it is sinful. Every single person who is connected to the making, who is connected to the sale, who is connected to the marketing, every single person is sinful with respect to khamar. Same thing with riba and usury. It cuts it from the bottom. It doesn't allow it to grow. Because it can become uncontrollable. And by that time, then you have, you have a society of drunkards in your hand. What will you do? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. He says uh, that your job, that's your job. That is what you need to do. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. He says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ by him in whose hand is my soul, you must certainly invite towards goodness and tell people the good things to do. You must certainly do that. And you must certainly stop people from the wrong things. You must do that. If you don't do that, he says, Oh. لَيُوشِكَنَّ اللَّهُ عَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ إِقَابًا or إِقَابًا مِنْهُ Then very soon, if you fail, fail to tell people the good things that they must do, and you fail to stop people from doing the wrong things, then Allah very soon, Allah will send such a punishment over you that will destroy you and eliminate you. And then, ثُمَّ تَدْعُونَهُ فَلَا يَسْتَجِبُ لَكُمْ Then you will make dua to Allah and He will not accept your dua at all. That will happen. This is something that is very important for us to understand. If you have a friend and you know that he is a person who takes bribes, and you continue to be his friend. And you never stop him from doing that. Then it is as if you have endorsed his action, his crime. Other people know that they will not, and they do not talk about it. He will just continue and continue until that becomes a plague in society. And you know why it becomes a plague in society? Because we are not stopping the wrong. We are not stopping it. That is why it becomes a plague and it becomes contagious because those who know that that person is doing it and get away, get away, he will do it also. And the other one who learns about it will also do it. And then it becomes a networking 
of bribery. Where the big man takes sufficient to divide among all those people who will cover up. We know that is the truth and that is what has happened. There is no doubt, you and I know very well, the far-reaching consequences of backbiting and slandering. Backbiting and slandering. It will destroy family members. It destroys the relation between a husband and a wife. If somebody wants to make what we call in training language commerce between your husband and wife, all they have to do is tell your wife something wrong and lies about you. And then they will tell you about your wife. That's commerce. And you know, many, many a time, you and I know very well, we live life. We know about life. We're not like small children, 10 and 11 years. You know, sometimes if, if your wife hears something bad about you, she immediately will change towards you, but she will not ask you. Because she knows if she asks you, you wouldn't say that you are guilty. Who will say, oh yeah, I'm doing this wrong thing, so, but please forgive me. So then, over a period of time, that dislike for you is built in the heart. If you, as a husband, somebody gives you false information about your wife, you know in your mind that if you confront her, she may lie to you. This is how the mind is thinking. Not that that is so. But that is what happens. So therefore the husband may not confront her. But he hears these things again and again. Daily somebody is whispering. Some devil is whispering in his ear. Before you know it. Not much of a time will pass. That both will start to move apart. Disliking in their heart each other. Somebody is driving a wedge between them. And they are going and going and going. And when they do confront each other, it might be too late because dislike and detestation has already, have already entered the heart. So one spouse will say to the other one, I, I'm not, I don't care what you say. I know you will lie. You have always lied to me and I wouldn't believe. Although what the spouse is saying is the truth and when that, what that devil had said was the falsehood. We all know the consequences, the far-reaching consequences of lies, of backbiting, of slandering, of gossip. We know that. It breaks family members. It breaks a community. It breaks the love and peace of hood that exists. It does. We all know that. We know it. There is no doubt about it. But how many times when that man, our friend, is doing that to us or with us about another person, how many times do we try to stop it? We don't. We don't. Many of us, well, at least, or some of us, that's a better word. Some, Allah knows best. We entertain it. We become part of the conversation. We hear it, we become equal in sin, and it will happen for days and for years, and we'll never say, brother, please, you know, you're my brother, I love you as a Muslim, but this is wrong, you have to stop it. Many don't do it. And you know, because, because of our action, of condoning that wrongdoings are spreading it's going to prevail and then goodness will stop so people will hardly have any good things to say about each other and they will always what will prevail is the backbiting and the slandering which will destroy this community and every other community in which that it exists that is a contagious disease when it takes root, it's like a plague. It destroys and it's difficult to get rid of. This is just one simple example to show that sometimes and many times we do have the ability to stop that is bad. But we don't do it for fear of people. We don't do it probably for fear of losing friendship. Probably because if we correct somebody, we think in our minds that 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 person will say, I don't want to be friend with you again. On one occasion, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the sahabas, don't destroy yourself. They asked the Prophet, O Prophet of Allah, how can we destroy ourselves? Who would like to destroy himself? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will call one of you on the day of judgment. And Allah will say to him, didn't you know such and such act was wrong? 
Didn't you know such and such act was wrong? The man will say, yes, O oh Allah, I knew it was wrong. Then Allah will say to the man, then why didn't you not stop it when you had the ability to stop it and you were in the presence of that? Why didn't you stop it? The man will say, for fear of losing friendship, O oh Allah. Allah says, wa iya ya farhabun. But isn't that you have to fear me alone? You are fearing other people. Don't you have to fear me alone? You are fearing other people besides me? Allah will destroy him there and then. This is why the Prophet wasallam said, don't destroy your own selves. So therefore, a very important lesson when we look. Things get ugly and they become big issues because of the fact that they were not controlled and put under control and contained when they were small issues. That is what happens. So therefore, as much as possible, we have to learn because it's a job given to us uh, to always encourage and tell people the good things to do. Always. We have to learn to fear only Allah because on the day of judgment, nobody will come to our help except Allah. Nobody. Nobody. The one whose friendship that we cherish so much and the ones that we would have given our lives for, they will be battling for their own selves on the day of judgment. They're not going to come to anybody's help. Everybody will need that little good deed that he can scrape and get. We have to learn to fear only Allah because Allah is the only one who will help us here and will help us, help us there. What does the Quran say? Allahu waliyu ladina amanu. Allah is the friend of those who believe. If we do good, Allah will be our friend. And when Allah is our friend, we stand in no need of having other friends beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, what will happen? We will not compromise in the teachings of Allah just to win friendship or keep friendship or keep this going. Fear Allah. Let's do that which is right. And the job and the task placed upon us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, told us, you tell people to do that which is good and stop them, at least with the power of speech, from doing that which is wrong. Hadith recorded by Imam Abu Dawud alayhi rahmah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said to the companions, do you know why the Bani Israel were destroyed? Do you know why? Or the Israelites were destroyed by Allah in the past? Many punishments came to them. They said, why your messenger of Allah? He said, sometimes a man will be passing by. He will see his friend doing something wrong. And he will go and tell his friend, that's wrong. Please don't do that. And he will go his way. The next day, he will see his friend doing something wrong. And he will tell him again, please don't do that. And he will go his way. And he will remind him a few times. And when his friend does not stop it, in order to continue the friendship, he starts to associate with his friend. When that happened, Allah confused their hearts with each other. Allah caused their hearts to mix with each other. So when this person couldn't recognize the wrong that he was doing, the other one who was correcting, he became like him that he can't even recognize the wrong that that person was doing. And because of that, Allah destroyed them and Allah punished all of them. This is what happens. So we have to protect ourselves and beg Allah to protect us. But these things, as I started by saying in the beginning, they, when we do good, Allah will give us good. We need to learn this important lesson. Among our family members, we have to ask ourselves the questions. You know, in our family members, are there family members who are doing things wrong? If they are doing things wrong, is it that we are concerned only about ourselves? Are we not going to stop them? Are we not going to tell our son or daughter or wife or husband, this is wrong, please stop that? That's a grave sin in Islam. Will we just continue allowing it? Well, it will, allow, it will continue and continue and continue until we will become a victim of the effects of the wrongdoing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. But may Allah give us the tawfiq and the strength and the ability to encourage and to invite and to tell people the good things to do. And also may Allah give us the strength in our hearts and the strength of iman also and the courage to tell people with wisdom and understanding 
that the wrong things that they are doing and ask them to stop it also as Allah has orders to other ordered us to do in the Holy Quran wal akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin abadan lalan nahid abadan lalan nahid abadan lalan nahid an khuta al imani darbuna darbun qawim darbuna darbun qawim bil huda al qurani abadan lalan nahid abadan lalan nahid abadan lalan nahid an khuta al imani دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القراني سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله سائر